I want to talk about an idea that, uh, that we had together, I think t two and a half years ago. It's called the Solar Kiosk. Um, I have to tell you a little bit how it happened. Um, we, um, as architects, uh, we're working on a project in, in Ethiopia, in, in Addis, Addis Ababa. It's, it's a hospital for kids that have AIDS and tuberculosis. Pretty deadly combination. And uh, we're working there, being in Addis, you meet other people, usually in the hotel lobby. Uh, that's how you meet people. We met a very interesting person. Um, his name is Andreas Spies, and he's from Berlin as well. So we got to talk. Um, he's in the solar business in Africa. He's also a lawyer here in Berlin. Interesting guy. And uh, talked about energy solutions, sustainability, you know, the same things that, that um, power thoughts, at least for us and for him. And we came across a big problem, um, a big problem that we talked about. And we, we thought, well, how can we change that? So first of all, I have to tell you what the problem is, and then I tell you what the idea is, what the, maybe the solution can be. This is the problem. 16% of the world population is off-grid in rural areas, meaning they don't have electricity. And they won't have electricity. It's simply too um, costly to bring streets and energy grid to the rural areas. It will never happen. That's why they stay there, off-grid. It's 1.5 billion people. It's actually a lot. Most of them are in the southern hemisphere, you know, South America, Africa, also Asia. What's bad for them, besides the fact that if you don't have electricity, it's hard to actually evolve, it's hard to grow. They don't share information like we do, as we do right now. That's a benefit we have in the first world, or the grid world. They don't have that. But they still need energy, they need light, they need to cook. Um, so they have to substitute energy with biofuel, which they buy. Paraffin, kerosene, pretty poisonous stuff, actually. Or they have to cut down the trees and the wood around them, uh, which is de deforestation. You know, they're, they're kind of destroying the, the, the proper surrounding that they need in order to cook, which is also poisonous. If you cook in your homes, you know, you, you're smelling a poisonous... Um, perfume, and it kills a lot of people. It's a huge problem. It's a huge problem for them. 40% of their entire income they have to spend on that stuff. Just to give you an, um, a comparison to that, that's 30 billion a year. That's a lot of money, you know, from people that live in Africa and rural areas. In comparison to that, for the energy that we use, we, I mean, the grid people, or the first world, mainly first world, we only spend 20 million. We spend less than these people have to spend on unclean energy. And that's a deadly circle. You know, you have to work hard to actually buy the unclean biofuel. And when you do that, you don't really have time to think of getting out of that circle. You really don't have the means or the electricity to have light at night so you can actually read or learn to read, just grow. You can't. You are in, in a circle where you can't get out. There's also success stories, especially in Africa. One success story is uh, the mobile communication. They're doing huge steps with that. Everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people have cell phones. You know, like we do, people love to talk to each other. It's not different than here. And it's affordable. They can afford it. Their problem in rural areas, how do you charge your phone if you don't have electricity? So again, you have the means, but you can't really do it. People walk for miles, for days sometimes, just to get to a generator that will charge the battery of the mobile phone. And it's a big thing. Communication is, as we all know, but in Africa it's a big thing. It's usually um, a wedding gift to give a mobile phone to your, to your wife um, when, you, when you marry. So mobile phones are everywhere, but electricity still is not. Who are these people? This map shows it brilliantly. That's the world at night. Wherever there's light, there's electricity, meaning the grid. Where there's no light, there's no electricity. It doesn't mean there are not people. There are a lot of people there. They're just not part of the grid. So darkness basically means no electricity. Knowing that the grid will never get there, how do we break that death circle? How do we break in? How do we provide them with energy? 
where we know energy in the grid won't get there. Well, there's one source we all know. I mean, that's a no-brainer. You know, a huge source of energy that exists, that is everywhere. And luckily, that energy is especially there where we are in rural off-grid areas. It's the sun. Where off-grid areas exist, usually you have a lot of solar radiation. So we just have to tap into it. It's easy, right? And there's one fact that makes the idea work now that we have, and that is the fact that the, the, the money you have to spend on transforming the sun's energy into electricity, meaning photovoltaics, usually, um, the, the, the prices are, had been coming down for years now to a point where actually you can make a business case out of it that people can afford. And that's basically the idea. It's a little box. It's a little piece of architecture. It's a little piece of infrastructure. It's a little energy hub that has solar panels on the top that's transforming the sun into electricity, gives light, gives the possibility to charge mobile phones, has the possibility to start a business. So basically, there's your idea. You have a decentralized autonomous business unit and you're creating from the sun's radiation, you're creating not only an electrical current, you're creating a currency, which is electricity. The person in our solar kiosk will sell electricity. We know they have the money. We just explained that. There's actually a lot of money there in comparison, uh, relatively. And people now have the possibility to buy electricity that is clean, that is cheaper, that's an endless source, so they don't have to cut down the trees around them, um, and have solutions that are sustainable. Meaning, we will sell energy, we will charge phones, but we will also sell solar lanterns or solar cooking stoves, things like that. So the one thing that we know exists is the sun. The second thing we know works in Africa is the kiosk. You don't have supermarkets in, in Africa. You have kiosks, little small things that sell everything. Um, and this is what this can do. Beside the electricity, maybe they start to sell other things as well. The business case that we, we try to uh, invent here, you know, you see the solar radiation, you see the box, and now the box transforms this energy into business case. We sell energy for mobile phones, we sell energy maybe for laptops if we have connection to the internet, in some areas you do, so you access information. We sell um, energy to um, recharge um, land, lamps, but we can also sell the lamps itself. It's an energy kiosk. You can also sell um, daily goods, of course. One great thing, we, we started to, we're architects, so we always have to think technologically, right? So if you produce energy, you want to be smart about it. One thing is that on a, on a bright day, maybe your battery is already full. You still produce energy, but it's wasted. So how do you store that extra energy without spending a lot of money? Because the batteries are expensive. We have a solar fridge. It's a fridge that can cool down medicine, but it can also cool down a cold drink. If you've ever been to Africa in a rural area, after a couple of days, you would give anything for a cold drink. And these people are not different from us. You know, they, they would love it. They would pay for it. So it becomes sustainable because it's a business. What did we do then, after having the idea? Uh, we did a lot of research, of course. Looked at Africa predominantly, looked at angles of the sun, of the power that we would generate, how many people live there, in what regions, who is off-grid, who is not, who has to travel, what is population density, what is mobile rate there, um, and tried it, trying to create a business out of it. Next thing, of course, we had to produce a product which is this little box that is safe, where technology is integrated, so it works perfectly. Because one of the problems, of course, is it's, it's not the first time that solar panels go into rural areas. You know, the, the GEZ in Germany or US aid, there had been aid out there. People gave a lot of money to produce um, solar fields. The problem with that often is that it's a gift, and it's a little bit of a poisonous gift, you know. A, you give something, it's kind of a hand-down approach, you know, it's like here, here you have you poor little things, like here's your solar panel, and then people disappear. Somebody trips over the cable, they don't know how to connect it again. Done. Not sustainable. What we're trying to do is something where 
there's a person in that kiosk, and that person will maintain the products, will maintain um, a contact with the people. And if there's a problem, he can fix it because he's trained by us. Or he can reach out to headquarters and say, it's like, hey, I need new solar lanterns, and by the way, we have a problem with this and this product. Can you help? And somebody will get out there. So we said, okay, let's just do a safe frame. We want to produce locally whatever goes into the walls so it can be customized, so people have the possibilities to bring in their own vibe, their, their, their own idea of what this kiosk is. Maybe locally you have clay brick and that works better. Maybe you have a dragon board. It doesn't matter. So we could provide the paneling, but I think the best idea is to produce it and, and um, do it locally. We know that if we are right and the business works, that the person in the kiosk will need to expand. If he is successful, all of a sudden, maybe he's having more daily goods. He might open an internet cafe in there. So he needs to expand. So the solution, the technical solution, has to be modular. So you can grow in each direction, meaning having more panels, more energy. On the other side, more possibilities to grow in your business. Next thing then, again, I won't bother you with too much details, but how you store energy, as I said, is important. How you don't waste energy. One big thing, you know, the biggest um, item in, in the solar kiosk is the battery. It's expensive, and we all know it has to be cheap. It has to be a cheap solution. So what we thought about in the solution is we, we drop the batteries into the ground so it's protected from this thermal mass. Because the problems with the batteries is, 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 is temperature differences. The whole um, energy management has the problem of temperature differences. So you want to cool the thing as much as you can. And the earth can cool the batteries. And we created a, a technology in the walls for the service that we have in the energy that is cooled by the air. And then we started to visualize, okay, what do we do? What kind of aesthetics do we want? A, we think that design is not a first world privilege. You know, we, we talked with a lot of people and they said, well, you know, it's too fancy. They don't want that. They don't need that. They will destroy it. They, they won't care. I don't, I don't think so. It's my experience working abroad that everybody cares and everybody wants to be proud of the thing he owns and th that he runs. If he does, that's social responsibility or social sustainability. He will take care of that thing because he loves it. So design, I think, is important. Um, that's a normal village. I don't hear is our little thing. What's interesting, what happens at night, of course, you know, same image at night, all of a sudden, you are on the spot. If you are the one that has the power to produce light at night, maybe music, having a cold drink, people will get there anyway. If they need to charge their mobile phones or not, what you create is a new marketplace. And that has some power to it. Where is it produced? Right now, the first prototype uh, is produced in Germany as we speak, um, or has been produced in Germany as we speak. So that's blue. Where, want, where do we want to go? We want to go brown, meaning everything is produced in Africa. Right now, still, the solar panels, the cheapest that you can get, are from China. That's why our solar business here in Germany is suffering so much. Uh, maybe that changes too. The first factory in Africa did start actually to produce a photovoltaics. So, first prototype here in Exometry is all the items are produced in Germany and controlled in Germany. You first have to realize what you do, you have to test it, you have to see if it works. And that's the first prototype that we built last year. We had an exhibition here in, in, in uh, Berlin, in an uh, art museum. That's the first solar kiosk that was built. The next prototype that we're producing right now you see already everything that's brown is produced locally, is not from Germany. So we only ship the frame, basically, and the technology, and the rest is being done in Ethiopia. And that's the team Ethiopia. We decided we need um, a proof of life. So we started, um, we decided we're going into Ethiopia, A, because the whole story, the idea started there, and uh, B, we love the people there. But it's an idea for everybody, of course, but you have to start somewhere. This is the team in Addis. And they're putting this thing together. Um, these are images that are three weeks um, old, putting together the first kiosk there. That's the pilot project with seven kiosks going to rural areas that we picked, where we picked the, the operators, the entrepreneurs working with us. Now, all these prejudices about business in Africa, we're talking to people about financing. 
Nobody wants to touch Africa. I think it's a big mistake. So this is coming together, and this is the kiosk in Africa as we speak. And this is still a rendering. This is actually a photograph that we took from, the, from one of the sites where we want to place one of the, uh, the kiosks. So this is a rendering, but in three weeks, it's going to be real. What we're trying to do here, again, is breaking the cycle, bringing off-grid autonomous energy providers into Africa that are a business case where people meet eye on eye level. This whole idea only functions and the company that we created, it's not a non-profit, it's a profit company. We only will make money if they make money and that's the beauty of it. And that means dignity for people actually working for themselves and making a difference. At the same time, with that power, you know you have access to information. A lot of things change if you actually have the possibility to check if there is an entrepreneur that maybe is paying a better price for your crop. But if you don't have that possibility, you will never get there. You will not grow. And it will create a new marketplace. That's at least what we predict. So affordable power, clean power, cheaper than the unclean power that they have right now. Communication, so they can reach out. They can have the same social benefits that we have because we can talk to each other. And if we get the internet there, it would be, of course, even better. Um, this is a rendering we did some time ago where you see the, the, um, the communication mast you know, for mobile phones. That's a business case in itself, but it's, that's the second thing that these, of course, are entwined. What we dream of, actually, is that they, these people at night not only enjoy cold beer, but maybe they even can watch TV. And as a last story I wanted to tell you, working in Addis in, in children's hospitals, you meet a lot of children, they're, they're fantastic, they're amazing, and they all love football, soccer in American. They're all, they know all the players from, from Arsenal, they know all the players from Manchester United. I don't know why these two teams, but they know everything about it, everything. But they've never seen a game in their life. And this is maybe on the side what we can bring to them, because we want to see soccer tonight as well, <laughs> as Germany's playing in the quarterfinals. Thank you.